to be received by the people of God. Pray now that you come and stand in my body. Think with my mind and talk with my tongue. Say those things that you desire your people to hear. Please, God, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, you're my strength and my only redeemer. In Jesus' name we pray and all of God's children declare, thank God and said, amen. Well, good morning. As we bless the Lord right there where we are, we bless the name of the Lord and we honor God for all that he has done. The word of God this morning, the Old Testament book of Genesis, the first book of the Bible, Genesis chapter 2. And I want to concentrate this morning on verse number 2. Genesis chapter 2, let's concentrate on verse number 2. Let's keep our Bibles open or our phone uh, Bible open, our app, so that we can walk the Word of God this morning. And the Word of God declares from Genesis chapter 2, verse 2, by the seventh day, God had finished the work he had been doing. So on the seventh day, he rested from all his work. Amen. As we continue this morning in part two of our sermon series for this month, living a balanced life, living a balanced life. Many scientists and medical professionals are sounding the alarm regarding a possible second wave of COVID-19. They are sounding the alarm and alerting each and every one of us that this second wave can be just as deadly as the first wave. They are warning the public not to relax or to let their guard down. Here at St. James, we are taking the advice of the scientists, the medical professionals, and the experts. The World Health Organization warns us to avoid what they are calling the three C's, crowded places, close contact settings, and confined and enclosed spaces. They're warning us to avoid these spaces, sisters and brothers, because those are places where COVID-19 spreads more easily. Sisters and brothers, 
those places accurately describes this sanctuary and many churches across America. If we are, in fact, headed in the direction of another deadly phase, it is imperative that we discover ways to navigate this now normal until it passes over. In the words of the senior bishop of the African Methodist Episcopal Church, Bishop Adam Jefferson Richardson, he said, and I quote, faith is not the avoidance of intelligence. It is not to ignore our God-given intelligence. And it is not to pretend that we don't have sense. In other words, sisters and brothers, have some sense as we navigate this COVID-19. No, we cannot shut our lives down. However, we can manage our lives in a safe, practical, and balanced manner. Sisters and brothers, balancing becomes very essential in times like these. Spiritual, psychological, and emotional balance are very much necessary in this season that we are navigating. Balancing those three critical areas will assist us greatly in not breaking down and falling apart amid this pandemic. If there ever was a script on how to handle isolation and to be productive while remaining socially distant, God's creation of this world is a perfect and classic example. Not only is God socially distant, but God is also well balanced in this text. God has a routine starting in chapter 1. God has a schedule that keeps God moving and keeps God productive. God's creation of this world demonstrates for us who are living in this now normal, not new normal, but now normal, how we can be productive, sane, forward-thinking, and balanced at the same time. Let me give you that again. God demonstrates in this text and God's creation demonstrates for us who are living in this now normal how we can be productive, sane, forward-thinking, and balanced at the same time. God completed, according to the text this morning, the heavens and the earth while God was isolated and while God was practicing social distancing. Sisters and brothers, if we look very closely at the story of creation in the book of Genesis this morning, we will discover something startling different about the seventh day in comparison to the previous six days in chapter 1 of Genesis. In fact, in Genesis chapter 2, verse 2, it does not begin with the standard introductory salutation as the preceding six days. You will note on the seventh day, if you look carefully, it does not begin with the standard salutation of then God said or and God said like the previous six days. You will also note that the seventh day does not end with the typical refrain of evening and morning to suggest the end of that day of creativity. Don't take my word for it. Let's look together this morning. Look at day one, sisters and brothers, in Genesis chapter one, verses three through five. Verse three says, and God said, let there be light. But then look at verse five. God called the light day and the darkness he called night and there was evening and there was morning the first day. But then day two begins in verse six. And God said, do y'all see that? The repetition there, and God said. But then look at verse eight, the close of day two. God called the vault sky and there, here it is again, there was evening and there was morning the second day. Look at day three in verse uh, number 14. And God said, let there be light. Y'all see it? And God said. And then it also closes, sisters and brothers, in verse 19. And there was evening and there was morning the fourth day. I'm on the fourth day. I'm sorry. But then look at day five in verse number 20. It says, and God said. But look at verse 23. And there was evening and there was morning the fifth day. Y'all stay with me. I'm going somewhere. Day six, it starts in verse 24. And God said, but then it ends in verse number 31. And it declares, God saw all that he had made. 
and it was very good, and there was evening, and there was morning, the sixth day. So we see the repetition. We see God's schedule. We see God's routine throughout the days of creation. But there is something distinctively different about the seventh day, sisters and brothers, that totally grabs my attention. The seventh day reveals to me what true balance really looks like. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm excited over what God has done the previous six days, but I'm even more overjoyed and excited by what the seventh day reveals unto me. For the text says, by the seventh day, that's chapter 2, verse number 2 of Genesis, God had finished the work he had been doing. That reveals to us, sisters and brothers, really where I want to pitch my homiletical hat this morning of preachment and show you how to live a balanced life in accordance with the way God created the heavens and the earth. And guess what? God did all of this while God was socially distant. God did all of this while he was living a balanced life. God did all of this in a sense of isolation and sisters and brothers what God is trying to convey to us this morning is that you too can live a balanced life sisters and brothers and be productive be distant be safe and even in isolation you can still live a balanced life listen at the text you live a balanced life by number one learning how to finish what you started mm, mm, mm. that's good right there you live a balance life by learning how to finish what you started look at verse 2 the a clause right there in the beginning by the seventh day God had finished the work he had been doing God had finished the work that he had been doing the text says sisters and brothers he completed he finished all of his assignments he finished the work without the assistance of an architect, without the assistance of an environmental team, without the assistance of a scientist, without the assistance of a construction team, God completes everything that God had set out to do. The completion of God's work is not due to any fatigue on God's behalf. God has not become weary. God has not become tired. God had simply finished the work he set out to do, and there was nothing else left for God to do at the end of the week. Don't miss that. God had an assignment. God put himself on a schedule. God had himself on a routine, and God completed the work that was assigned to his hand. God gets the creation job done in a time of isolation without any excuses, without the benefit of any cheerleaders, encouragers, or supporters because there is nobody else there but God and a few cherubims and seraphims that God has the privilege of talking to. So what does God do? God pushes himself. God encourages himself. God motivates himself to achieve his goal of creating the heavens and the earth. He completes the work that was assigned by him to his own hands. And all I'm trying to tell you, sisters and brothers, you got to learn how to complete some things. You got to learn how to finish what you have started. And you may say this morning, well, pastor, I don't have any support. I don't have any encouragers. Well, God says there's nobody there but me in the text. And I've learned how to push myself. I've learned how to encourage myself. I'm telling you, if you want to finish what you started during this pandemic and during this season, you better learn the art of encouraging yourself and the art of pushing yourself. Tell yourself in the morning, get yourself up. Fix yourself up. Put on your best clothes. Get to that computer. Get the assignment done. Complete what you have started. And that's what I want to tell you this morning. Talk to yourself in your living rooms and say, I'm going to finish what I started. Sisters and brothers, living a balanced life is not designed to give you a cop out or an excuse for not finishing the many things you have started. 
Now, we have many cliches that we recite these days. Y'all know some of them. Let me just give you one. We, we like declaring, if I work hard, I ought to play hard. And so we have that cliche, work hard, play hard. But the problem is, many of us are playing hard, but we ain't doing much work preach slaughter. Yeah, we're we doing a whole lot of playing, but we're not completing a whole lot of stuff. We are starting stuff, but we are not finishing what we are starting. The text uses the word work. Let the church say work wherever you are. It's work, which suggests that God was engaged in common and human labor. Let that sit for a minute. God, work, 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 work. The Bible says by the seventh day, God had finished the work he had been doing. Let's, let's study the word work. That implies that God engaged in common and human labor. This explains then why Jesus had to work as well. Because Jesus, although the son of God was a carpenter, because the creator had to work, so his son had to work. This is not a scene from coming to America uh, when the king comes to look for Akeem and he says, my son works? No, God says, yeah, my son works. My son has to have a job. God didn't use a magic wand to get creation done. God went to work to get it done and God did not stop until it was finished. And if God had to work, then what about you and what about me? Sisters and brothers, my message to you in this season is to finish whatever you have started. And I know God is his own supervisor. I know some of you critical people are saying, well, he's the CEO, but at least he's willing to work until that phase has been completed. This season is not a season for you to be lazy. It's not a season for you to be lackadaisical just because you're working from home. Home. This is a season to finish some areas in your life that you have started to complete some goals that you have started to complete some ideas that you have launched. This is the season, sisters and brothers, that you finish what you started. Living a balanced life involves productivity, not lackadaisical and a lazy lifestyle. And I want you to push yourself this morning, pat yourself on the chest right now and remind yourself that that I can be productive even in this season that I'm in, in COVID-19. Sisters and brothers, you live a balanced life, first of all, by learning how to finish what you started, but you also live a balanced life by, number two, learning the importance of rest. Mm -hmm. Yep, learning the importance of rest. He did not rest before he worked. He worked and then he rested. If you don't believe me, verse 2, let's finish it. By the seventh day, God had finished the work he had been doing. So on the seventh day, he rested from all his work. He rested. He, God, rested. Yahweh rested. He rested. You got to learn the importance of rest. Second verse, the B clause says, so on the seventh day, he rested from all his work. Once again, God's work as related to the completion of creation was not due to fatigue. God simply ran out of stuff that he was scheduled to complete and stuff he had assigned to himself. There was nothing left for God to do. The created order was whole and the created order was completed. According to Hebrew scholars, the word rested in the text means ceasing of creative activity. <laughs> I love that. Preach myself happy. He, he rested. That means he ceased from creative activity. That means he allowed his body to rest. He allowed his mind to rest. He allowed his creativity to rest. And the reason some of us don't have the creative geniuses and juices that we need in this time is because we are not resting properly. 
Also, God abstained from work on the seventh day. Let me say that again. God abstained from work on the seventh day because God earned it. God deserved it. And God finished what he started. Yep, he, he abstained from work on the seventh day because he had earned it. He deserved it. And he finished what he started. You know, a recent study found that the average working day for many has increased by three hours in the United States since mid-March 2020. It also admits some people's hours have decreased tremendously. Sisters and brothers, if God needed the rest, so do you and so do I. Living a balanced life requires you to hold yourself accountable to rest times and rest periods. Let me say that again. Living a balanced life requires you to hold yourself accountable to rest times and rest periods. What are you saying, Pastor? Learn how to go to sleep at night. Mm, mm, mm. Learn how to get a good night of rest. Even with work at home, you should periodically remove yourself from the screen for 10 to 15 minutes every few hours so that you can refresh yourself. That's the reason God separated the evening from morning. I read that for you in verses 3 through 31. There's a reason he separated and then there was evening and then there was morning the fourth day, the fifth day, or the sixth day. You see that continually in the writ. You see that continually in the text where there was evening and there was morning. There's a reason for the separation of both of them. Getting the proper rest is necessary for your spiritual emotional and psychological survival let me say it the way my old man my daddy would say it he would oftentimes say man <laughs> you can't burn both ends of those candles because one of those ends is going to go out on you in essence don't let the end that you're in go out because you're trying to burn both ends of the candle some of y'all are getting more rest now than you ever gotten in your life because you can't club you can't go out you can't walk the streets all night so you ain't got nothing else to do but to sit in your house watch tv and relax and maybe that was god's way of slowing some of us down because we was about to wreck our life running from hither to there running from there to here and God said you got to slow down because one of those candles is getting ready to go out and I've learned uh, as a pastor that stuff will go on without you yep y'all missed that right over your head stuff will go on without you the party is still gonna go on you better learn how to rest your body your friends are still gonna go on you better learn how to rest and God rested on the seventh day. I'm done. You live a balanced life by learning how to finish what you started. You live a balanced life by learning the importance of rest. But you also live a balanced life, third of all, by learning how to be kind to yourself. Mm -mm -mm. Pastor, you preaching good. You got to learn how to be kind to yourself. I, I know I lost about 20 y'all. You trying to figure out where in the text is the Lord kind to himself. Where? Well, there it is. Then, verse 3, God blessed the Sabbath day. <laughs> and he made it holy because on it he rested from all the work of creating that he had done. God shows us how to be kind to ourselves. What you mean, Slaughter? And God blessed the seventh day <laughs> and God made it holy note the seventh day is the only day of the week blessed and consecrated by God the, the only day blessed and consecrated by God is the seventh day and he blessed the seventh he consecrated it how slaughter because he made it holy Mm, mm, mm. When God made the seventh day holy, 
he basically sanctified that day. When he made it holy, he basically declared that that day was especially devoted to him. <laughs> he said, this is my day. I'm be kind to myself. I'm going to take care of myself. I, I'm going to bless this day, and I'm going to make this day holy. God didn't do that with any other day. You won't see that on the first day, the second, the third, the fourth, the fifth, or the sixth. You only see that on the seventh day before the fall of humanity. The Sabbath represented the perfect creation. After the fall, the Sabbath became a goal to be sought by all. According to the late Warren Wisby, the Sabbath, and I quote, the Sabbath speaks of law as six days of labor, which are followed by rest. But the Lord's day speaks of grace, for we begin the week with rest that is followed by works. God, God was kind to himself. Sisters and brothers, let me be clear as I close this, this part two of this sermon. You better learn the art of being kind to yourself. Say that again, Slaughter. Yeah, you better learn the art of being kind to yourself. Stop waiting on people to treat you right and learn how to treat yourself right. Mm, yeah, I got to say that again. Uh, stop waiting on people to treat you right and start learning the art of treating yourself right. Learn how to prioritize self-care. Learn how to make time for what you want to do, not what other people want you to do, but learn how to make time for what you want to do. Make time to exercise. Make time to enjoy your hobbies. That's what I do, sisters and brothers. When I talk all that trash on social media, I make time for my hobbies. Watching sports is my hobby. Watching football is my hobby. Talking bad about my team is my hobby. Dogging your team is my hobby. You got to make time for stuff you like doing that won't cost you too much. And you got to learn how to create time for yourself. Psychologists say uh, keeping commitments to yourself are key to maintaining your mental health. If you want to survive this pandemic, then you got to learn how to keep commitments that you make to yourself. In other words, you got to learn how to make yourself happy. Mm, I'm going to say that again. You got to learn how to make yourself happy. If you can't make yourself happy, then how you think somebody else will? You got to learn how to make yourself happy. You already made others happy. That's what point one was about. But now you got to learn how to make yourself happy. Learn how to treat yourself. Learn how to take yourself out. Learn how to date yourself. Learn how to send yourself some of the gifts that you like. I'll see y'all on Wednesday. But I wonder is there anybody on the internet that can give God praise because I've learned how to make myself happy. I've learned how to give myself joy. I've learned how to push myself. I've learned how to be kind to myself. Do I have a witness somewhere that can talk to yourself this morning and say to yourself, I'm going to treat you better. I'm going to take better care of you. I'm going to buy you some of the stuff you want. I'm going to do some of the things you want. Have I got a witness in here? If God was kind to himself, then what's stopping you from being kind to yourself? Let the redeemed of the Lord shout yes! Shout yes!
Treat yourself right. I'm done. Learn how. Treat yourself right. I'm done. I'm done. I uh, want to extend an invitation. Don't run. Don't run. This is an invitation moment. This is an opportunity for you to treat yourself right. This is an opportunity for you to be kind to yourself. You know, it's Pastor's Appreciation Month, so they say, and I've learned how to appreciate myself. I don't need nobody else to appreciate me. I've learned how to appreciate myself. We had a pastor that died suddenly yesterday in this conference, uh, Pastor Wilfred Lewis, who's come and sat in this church. Now his wife is a widow at this time, and I pray to God that he learned how to appreciate himself and learn the value of being kind to himself. Because ministry can be a cruel job. You got so many experts everywhere all around. But one thing I like about this pandemic, all the experts are quiet because they never navigated this now normal. So I want to encourage you not to hesitate, not to wait to get your life together. I want you to get your life together right now. Don't say I do it next Sunday or I do it when this pandemic is over. No, I need you to do it now. If you're watching on social media or you're watching on social media at this time, I want you to type, I want to be saved. I want to be saved. If you're on our app, you're on YouTube, it's up now, or you're on our website, I want you to email us. As well as social media, I need you to email us. Join at stjamesame.org. It's on the screen right now. That's how you get in contact with us. Come on, I need your name. I need your mailing address and I need a good contact number that's what I need you to email us and simply say I want to be saved second appeal I want to offer you an opportunity to join the greatest place on the planet the greatest kingdom that God has created on this planet his name St. James and I'm Ronald Slaughter and I would like nothing else than to be your pastor if I'm talking to you and you want to join this village you want to join our church I want you to type I want to join. I want to join. Then I need you to email us at join at St. James, S-T-J-A-M-E-S-A-M-E dot org. Come on, join our family. Join our family. Join our family. Come on, bless me. Bless me. Bless me indeed. Bless me. Come on, sister. Come on, brother. Come on, join us. Join us. Come on, come on, my faith. Even on the internet. Even on the internet, you can join us. Come on. You can be saved right now, this morning. Indeed. I pray. Come on, by faith. Come on, by faith. We're waiting. Come on, sing my part. Keep your hands. Keep your hands. Come on, come on, come on. Oh, no evil can not, not harm me. Sunshine. Sunshine and rain. I'm waiting on you, brother. I'm waiting on you, sister. I'm waiting on you. I'm waiting on you. I'm waiting on you. Testify, enlarge. Enlarge my territory. Come on, he'll do it right now. He'll do it. In a pandemic, he'll do it. Enlarge, enlarge. Enlarge my territory. Come on, come on. Enlarge, enlarge. Enlarge my territory. One more time, one more time. Enlarge.
That's good. That's a good place to clap your hands right there. That's a good place to give God glory. That's a good place to give God praise. We're going right into our giving. Going right into our giving. We're going right into our giving. As you give unto the Lord, the Lord will give it back to you. Our giving options are on the screen at this time. Our giving options. Remember, I want you to make all you can. Save all you can. Give all you can. You can give today electronically on our website or cash app or text to give. But you also can mail your gifts or you can drop them off on Tuesday or Thursday between the hours of 9 a.m. and 6 p.m. You can drop your gifts off. Sisters and brothers, thank you so much for being faithful. All of you, thank you, especially you that have given you, you and you. Thank you for being faithful. Here's an update where your resources are going. The asbestos will be removed from the properties across the street uh, beginning this week or next week at the latest. So we're moving right along with the demolition of those properties. Security cameras, that project will start this week. Uh, that project, close to $10,000, will start this week. This week, we're also donating over a thousand plus dollars or more worth of supplies to New Jersey reentry for our brothers and sisters that are coming home from incarceration under the bill that was signed by Governor Phil Murphy. Very sadly, many of the persons that are coming home, sisters and brothers, don't have the basic necessities that they will need to survive. So St. James is buying brand new products. We're donating everything on that list on the screen. Feminine products, soap, toothbrushes, toothpaste, shampoo, socks, underclothes, all of those things. We are donating thousands of dollars worth. We are ordering them and taking them directly to New Jersey reentry. And so we want to encourage you to keep giving. When you give, you free us up to do these type of things by giving your tithe and your offering. And that's why you get blessed. You don't know who you bless. You don't know who you made life better for by sowing your tithe and your offering. So I want to encourage you to continue to give, continue to give. Some of our ministry highlights, uh, this Tuesday, uh, this Tuesday, my namesake celebrates his ninth birthday. Uh, R2 will turn nine years old on this Tuesday, October the 13th. At 11 a.m., y'all see him. Uh, his daddy and mama brought him a nice little go-kart. He already got his gift, uh, and so he's happy. He said to me and to his sisters and his mama, he said, this is my last year in the single digits. This is my last year in the single digits. Y'all better pray for that boy. That's, that's my son in whom I'm well pleased. I love that little fella. That's my, that's my nanu. That's our two, y'all. So wish him a happy birthday. Wish him a happy birthday. Uh, don't forget, join me on Wednesday at 11 a.m. as I preach for Payne College at 11 a.m. 11 a.m. this coming Wednesday, Payne College Chapel Hour, Family Reunion Chapel. I've been asked to preach virtually. I'm not going to Augusta. I will be preaching virtually live at 11 a.m. We will send the link out on Tuesday. It's on the screen now, but we will also send the link out on Tuesdays, so all you have to do is click it so you can be a part of it. Now, if you missed Bible study last week, my God, you missed a good time. If you missed Bible study, you missed a good time in the Word. But you can join us this Wednesday at 7 p.m. as we continue the series, How to Keep Moving When You Don't Know Where You're Going. You can watch on all of our streaming sources. Our website, our app, Zoom, Facebook, or YouTube Live. You can watch Bible study on all of our streaming outlets. Of course, if you're on Zoom, I can see you on Zoom. And I can socialize with you on Zoom. So I look forward uh, to Bible study this coming Wednesday at 7 p.m. Uh, resources are on the screen now, some of our resources. COVID-19 for school age tuition, navigating Medicare, breast cancer, talk to test by St. Michael's. The census deadline has been extended to October 31st. Uh, also, the voting options, all of this is coming across the screen. Listen, I need y'all to vote, but I need you to read carefully because on that ballot is not only a referendum, but there are freeholder and 
city council elections in various municipalities. And it's all lumped together. You got to read. It says, choose three of the names below. Don't choose one, choose three. And so I need y'all to read these ballots carefully as we exercise our right to vote. Please read that ballot from cover to cover, from cover to cover. Our women's ministry, Virtual Breast Cancer Awareness Month, What's in Your Genes is coming up on October the 24th at 10 a.m. More information will be forthcoming. Also, prayer and devotion Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 7 a.m. Men's Bible study on Saturdays at 8 a.m. Women's Bible study is coming your way. Listen out for the date that we will release soon for women's Bible study. And so, sisters and brothers, I love y'all. Let me see who's on. Let me see who's on. Councilman Craig Epps, God bless you, brother. Kettles, TJ Kettles, God bless you. Elliot Taylor, God bless you. William Register, God bless you. Betty Smithson, God bless you. Erica Joy, God bless you. Sister Strickland, God bless you. Annette Hightower, God bless you. Sister Carol Carter, God bless you. Siobhan Richardson, Sherry Tucker, Angela King, God bless you all. God bless you. God bless you. Courtney Curry, God bless you. Brother Darrell Pope, God bless you. Aisha Rogers, God bless you. Lex Ray McClendon, uh, Sharon Elijah, God bless you. Elizabeth Jackson, God bless you. Patricia Daniels, God bless you. Victoria Gandy, God bless you. Amy Brown, Linda Moore, Joanne Beckett, Joyce Lawrence, Valerie Crow, Sherry Tucker, God bless y'all. Carolyn Howard Dexter, God bless you. Pam McGill, Carolyn Waters, Nayana Irby, God bless y'all. Reverend Nayana. Brother Kevin Waters, God bless you. Patrice Manning, God bless you. Alicia Tillman, God bless you. Alfreda Coachman Daniels, there she is. God bless you. Sister Coachman Daniels, Sister Bester, God bless you. God bless you. If you need housing, they have several men being released this week that would be homeless. Amen. If you have housing, let us know. Crystal Westry, God bless you. Sonia Finn, Shea Meeks, Simone Lashley, God bless you all. Sister uh, Zia, God bless you. Sister Jack, God bless you. Latanya Easterly, Cheryl Sidney, Kimberly Malloy, Kimberly Malloy, God bless you. Tara Stafford, Tara Stafford, God bless you. Sharon Williams, God bless you all. God bless you. God bless you. Come on, Pastor Yancey, good to see you. That's my big brother there. God bless you. Come on, Lord, keep your hands upon me so that no evil can come upon me. Sister Ruthie Billigan, God bless you. William Brookings, keep Sunshine, sunshine. God bless you. Enlarge, enlarge. Enlarge my territory. Hallelujah. Enlarge. Enlarge. Sharon Elijah, Charles Gilliam, God bless you. Enlarge Nicole Smith. God bless you. Evangelist McIntosh, God bless you. Enlarge. Linda Williams, I see you. God bless you all. God bless you all. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Maria Spearman, God bless you. Monique Bostic, God bless you. Joyce Hunt, God bless you. God bless you. Audrey, God bless you. God bless you. I want you all to know as we zoom in, whatever camera we're going to zoom in so that I can tell you how much I love you. I want you to read my lips. I love you. I'm looking for whichever camera we're coming in through. I love you. I love you. I love you. I love you. I love you.
Come in. Camera one is working. All right. Zoom in. I love you, St. James. The greatest people I ever met in my life. And I love you. I want you to have a great week. I want you to make sure you learn how to finish what you started. I want you to learn the art of getting some rest. And I want you to learn how to be kind to yourself. And now hear the words that God gave to Moses. Moses gave to Aaron. Aaron to the children of Israel. May the Lord bless you. And may the Lord keep you. May the Lord allow his face to shine upon you. May the Lord be gracious unto you. And may the Lord lift up his countenance before you. And above all things, may the Lord give you his peace. And when he give you his peace, he'll keep his hands on you. When he give you his peace, he'll enlarge your territory. Come on, one more time. Keep your hands. Keep your hands upon me. So that. you.